Hey everyone, and welcome to Vivid's Virtual Customer Days. I'm Archie Robestoff, and I'm joined by my colleague Tal Levy Joseph. And today we're here to talk about microfocus and DevOps. Um, so obviously, you know, organizations are, um, you know, being forced to digitally transform. And, and the reality is, is that you know most organizations are really just trying to get closer. Uh, to their end customers. In order to be able to really make that evolution, it requires a, a lot of change within the organization, right? And that change, you know, comes at, you know, a, a top line sort of mandate where, you know, you've got to make sure that, uh, you know, we, we watch our spend. And, you know, if we've got a really digital transform, we just spent a whole bunch of money on a brand new CRM. Why isn't that helping us? Well, okay, what, what's the problem here? Uh, and at the same time, there's a bottom line mandate. You know, all this has to take place um, with some constraints, right? It's not like uh, CIOs, IT uh, departments, and line of business groups uh, are getting more budgets every year. Usually it's, hey, congratulations, you did great this year. Uh, now do exactly the same thing uh, and you got to do it for half the price, right? So, you know, there's this uh, constant challenge to have to sort of run and transform. You know, with that in mind, you know, let's just sort of uh, illustrate that with a little bit more depth here. You know, so this is literally just a typical organization where, you know, there's a lot of technologies in place because they've been uh, adopting these over the years to accomplish whatever, uh, you know, uh, business challenge they were under at the time or whatever technology that they had to deal with. And, you know, it ranges everywhere from, you know, legacy uh, mainframe host environments that have been running the core business for the past 40 years um, reliably. Um, there's been many, many people, many, many years of investment put into those things, and they're being leveraged, and they're being leveraged in different ways, and those ways are adding different levels of complexity. So, you know, that's really the challenge is, you know, how do you deal with all this complexity, right? It's not like um, we can start from scratch, you know, our our CEO likes to talk about how, you know, most organizations have to not only, you know, fly the airplane with all four engines going, but they have to replace those engines while they're in flight. And, you know, that's a challenge. And, you know, this is what Microfocus really strives to help organizations with. But, you know, navigating this complexity and then trying to bring some semblance uh, of agility into the mix, you know, really starts to now uh, challenge the the organization. What we find is that, you know, when most organizations try to embrace agile um, and they do it improperly, you know, it actually has the the negative consequence. We actually see organizations uh, getting slower in their delivery times, and they can't figure out why. Um, you know, and then when we start to sort of move faster and we start to take on projects. You know, if there's a disconnect between different lines of businesses or shadow IT taking place, you know, there may be sort of a lack of effectiveness of all these interworking parts because they do need to work together. You know, you can't be working in silos. You can't be working in, you know, disparate islands of unorganized information. It's pro it's a problem. And last and, and definitely not least, you know, all this comes with a cost. Right. It's like, uh, you know, without a comprehensive plan that has all these working groups working together, um, you know, cost is definitely going to increase and it's going to, you know, add time. It's going to add manpower. It's going to add resources and constraints and it's going to be a big challenge. Right. So, you know, it's 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 safe to say that uh, for a lot of these organizations, this this is this is challenging to them. Right. And this is where, you know, Microfocus really tries to help uh, overcome some of those challenges. So if we look at, you know, again, some more stats of a lot of customers, this was a, uh, a survey we did um, not too long ago where, you know, more than half of enterprises are utilizing DevOps today, which is good news. Right. A lot of people are embracing it. They're seeing the benefits, um, but less than half of them are actually scaling it, meaning, you know, they, they got a good start. Uh, but it's not really effective across the board to gain critical mass to really achieve the mission of getting closer to that end customer via digital transformation and evolution. Um, and then the the other sort of um, stat here that is uh, even more concerning is the fact that, you know, only about a third of, of the app real estate is, you know, being deployed using some DevOps environment. Now, um, again, it's concerning because, you know, it's not enough, but you know, let's let's not be you know crazy here. We don't expect this number to be a hundred percent because there are some products or some services or some elements of the business that are perfectly fine running in a waterfall. 
you know, environment releasing maybe once a year, you know, maybe some legacy things that are being supported. So again, we don't expect a huge number here, but the bottom line out of all of this is that, you know, everyone wants, there's definitely a need, uh, people are embracing, but because of that, they're, they're, they're running into a number of challenges and those challenges may actually have negative consequences, which make the organization slower and overspend, therefore defeating the entire intent in the beginning. Um, and when we ask customers kind of, you know, where are you and where essentially do you want to be tomorrow? You know, it's, it's interesting because the answer is, um, you know, effectively our tagline, right? And that's obviously why we have this tagline, but you know, they say, look, we, we just want the ability to deliver, you know, high speed, high quality applications, um, or, or high quality applications at high speed. That is, uh, with, you know, as low risk as possible, you know, we have everything from planning and governing, um, you know, the projects that are taking place. So what is it that we're looking for? Um, what are the requirements? What are the visualizations? Um, you know, what are, what's the overall project plan? Uh, what are we going to spend on this? Who's the resources and all of that, having that all packaged up and agreed and collaborated against, and then, uh, integrated nicely into, you know, the develop and the test, uh, technology. So understanding what it is we're supposed to be building. Why is it we're building? What do the wireframes look like? Are we sure we want to do that? Yeah. Okay. Let's go back and forth development and agile planning and tracking, um, and, and, uh, even change management and understanding, you know, how we take uh, code that gets compiled piled up and pass it to some peers so we can validate it earlier and more often. And then everything through testing uh, and being able to functional and performance test and security test all in one. Um, and then looking at sort of the ongoing deployment and the release technology, which Tali will hit on in a little bit. But, you know, if we're pushing more through the organization at more speed and more velocity, well, there's going to be a need to automate the activities of how we release those out into, uh, you know, in the production environment. Um, and then we have from there um, all of our operate and monitoring technologies that, you know, are able to understand, you know, how those applications are performing in real time. What changes do we need to make to bring it back into the requirement? So, so when looking at, you know, again, the individual customer's environment, we, we want to look at um, three areas of focus. And I'll cover one of these and Tali will cover the other two. And first and foremost, the area of, you know, how are you doing testing? right? Is it all manual? Is it tied to, you know, the overall business needs? Is it tied into the developers? Uh, are you shifting left and testing more with the dev testers? Uh, and so I'll touch on this in a little bit, why it's important to sort of rethink and take a look at what smarter testing means to you in your organization, because that has uh, some massive benefits if you get that right, right away. Um, and then Tali will talk you through DevOps governance, right? Because it's very difficult um, to improve what you can't already measure if it's not sort of connected and visible. So, you know, the whole premise of DevOps governance, understanding, connecting, and having visibility across all these disparate tools, across all these different business units, uh, so that you can actually see and coordinate and everything and understand what's coming uh, and, and, and what happens if the business needs to change direction very quickly. Uh, and then last but not least, I kind of covered this a little bit earlier, but you know, if we are getting a lot more velocity coming out, if we are truly successful with our agility practices and getting a really strong, uh, you know, DevOps practice going, you know, we're going to be pushing more releases out to the market. Um, and, you know, that requires you to take a look at, you know, what is your current release velocity? Can you sustain something like that? Or are you going to break uh, that last mile? So Tali will talk you through kind of these two practices. So, um, let me take you through kind of the, a, a reason to take a look at smarter testing, right? So when we look at automation, I think we've reached a tipping point where it is now kind of becoming one of the key bottlenecks um, in the overall SDLC. Um, and that's just because it, it requires too much time and effort, right? There's there's way too much to be testing. The, the environment is way too chaotic and things change way too often. Um, and because of that, it, it's tough to kind of, you know, build and keep the right skills because things change so often. And at the same time, uh, because it requires so much effort that we, we kind of need uh, everyone to participate. And, and that's tough, right? Because testers are testers, but developers are not testers. And so how do you convert a developer into somebody who can do some tests? And how do you convert, you know, a business analyst who knows how to use the application into potentially a tester, right? And in and, and sort of all that difficulty is is really just making it hard for uh, organizations to keep pace um, with all the change. 
right? If we've got a really good DevOps practice and we're really listening to the needs of the end users, you know, there are going to be releases, you know, in theory, much more often than they are happening now, right? Weekly, monthly, uh, you know, quarterly is probably sort of not enough these days. Uh, and so the more rapid that's happening, it's it's just there's there's going to be too many cycles. And so you don't have the luxury uh, of keeping up with 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 uh, having nine month test cycles and giant automation teams that their only job is to do testing. And so, you know, we need to uh, overcome that in some way, shape or form. So so let me give you an example here. So in this this environment and in this example, we've got. Uh, one mobile application that uh, you know we're we're putting out there, and we're going to deploy it, uh, and now we want to test it on you know three different environments: iOS, Android, and then let's just take you know a, a web environment on on a mobile device. And I just want to test two pieces of capability, right? Searching and buying. Um, now, in this paradigm, in sort of any technology, whether it's uh, you know an open source technology or one of our competitor technologies. Uh, you know, the fact will remain that you'll need to create, um, you know, scripts for each one of these things um, for each one of those platforms. So, you know, because these are identified differently for each one of the environments. Um, and so what happens is we've got this exponential multiplier of scripts that we're going to have to maintain. And anytime I make a change, let's just say I make something simple. Uh, we need to switch around the hamburger menu and the shopping cart. Let's flip those two things around. Um, well, if that happens, then, uh, you know, every single one of these scripts will break or every single one of these scripts that are interacting with those objects will break to be more specific. This represents a challenge because most organizations are probably going to have more than two pieces of capability uh, and they're probably going to have more than three uh, environments are testing. Um, and so you'll see that exponential multiplier continues just to get more chaotic. Uh, and if, you know, any small change or any new addition sort of breaks the automation, well, people have to stop, uh, go and fix the automation and test it and get it back out. So this is where we get a big bottleneck. Uh, and so what we've done is um, we've introduced some AI, some artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, in our technology here. So this actually doesn't even happen anymore, right? The need to have multiple scripts across multiple environments uh, goes away uh, because we're no longer identifying those objects uh, under the constraints of the SDK or the environment that we're working with. We're identifying those objects like a human would. Right, we've trained the computer using the neural network that we've built uh, to understand what is a shopping cart, right? What is a search button? What is a hamburger menu, right? And so, in this case, if a developer moves something, moves that shopping cart to the hamburger menu and, and swaps those positions, you know, we're not relying on any positional data or object-based data that says where this thing is. Uh, we're just saying, hey, click the shopping cart. Uh, and the environment says, hey, wait a minute, I, I see a shopping cart. It happens to be in a different spot. I'm still going to click it, right? And so this has huge benefits, massive benefits. I mean, you're looking at the reduction of thousands upon thousands of scripts, uh, the resiliency of automation across the board, um, no longer having to sort of be at the mercy of, oh, hang on a second, the automation broke, stop the presses, everything's not going to happen anymore. Um, so with that, what I want to show next is uh, a quick demo video of actually this happening. All right, demo time. We've got a standard UFT environment. We've got a device that we're testing against, a mobile application here. And just showing you what happens before. This is a standard script, so it's going to pass. No problem. Now, what's going to happen is the business has decided to change something on the application. We're going to change the hamburger menu and the shopping cart menu. Uh, and in this case, we should expect that that script and that test will break uh, because we are now still reliant on where that element needed to be. And obviously, the environment can't find it because it's not where it's supposed to be. And we're going to see that report here in a second. Loading it up, can't identify where that thing was supposed to be uh, when I was going to click on that menu and it failed. Now what you're seeing is our AI project and you can see where instead of using identifiers and specific object names, we're using natural language. So click on the hamburger menu, click on the profile, 
what this does is this shields us from a lot of change that happens from the development team. So if a developer does decide to move the hamburger menu and the shopping cart menu, uh, the script is not going to have a panic attack. It's still going to say, well, okay, um, I'm going to simply click on what I believe to be a hamburger menu, regardless of where that is. And if you think about this, this is pretty powerful technology because um, it doesn't create chaos whenever we have to implement change that's coming from uh, a customer environment. So customers are going to require more change, which is going to require more resilience on the script side. And if the environment can't deal with that, you're going to have a slowdown. So we're pretty excited about this technology. It allows us and allows our customers to be a lot more flexible to dramatically lower the overall cost of ownership of maintaining and creating tests. Uh, and it really allows them that ultimate flexibility so they can make those changes as rapidly as they need to without having to deal with um, anything downstream breaking or any chaos happening uh, at that test level. So stick around. We're going to show a lot more of this in another session. Uh, you're going to see a little bit more detail. You're going to see the natural language uh, codeless interface as well. And I'll pass it over to Tal to take you through the rest. Thank you, Archie. So, hey, Archie talked about in the beginning the disruptions that are happening in the market that requires organization to change. And we see a lot of the transformation to Agile and DevOps. And the paradox is that those trans transformation happens with these three values in mind, increasing speed, higher quality, increased the visibility, all of that. But what we're seeing in reality, then when Agile and DevOps starts to scale up the organization, then this is where problem starts. And a lot of the challenges uh, occur because Agile and DevOps boats or in most cases started from the ground up and it's very convenient in the team's level you know the flexibility of the tools they have but when you move up the organization when you have multiple teams and multiple releases and multiple initiatives and you have to manage them all this is when when it starts to break so what happens in reality that you know, you start in scale Agile and DevOps, you start to lose the speed. What you end up doing is sometimes compromise on quality because you don't want to miss deadlines and everything. And what you don't want to do is compromise on quality because the, we all know the high price that you pay on compromising uh, quality. You want to be able to increase visibility, but you can't really do it because a lot of the functions uh, organization have decentralized, so they lo no longer have this governance or uh, center of excellence that consolidates you know, any kind of view. And what we often see is that the business is disconnected from the execution, so they don't have any visibility on what's going on in the execution layer. Now, if you look at the uh, multiple tools that there are in place in the existing ecosystem because of the flexibility that was given, then the organization starts to lose control of what's going on underneath. And if I want to stretch for a second the continuum, like the circular uh, shape, and divide it into a different value stream or different phases, then we can identify the plan and govern, develop and test, deploy and release, and operate and monitor. But what's important in this slide is that um, in most of organ organization, um, I, I always say DevOps and Agile are not the goal here. They're a mechanism to get to something. And this is where it's important to define the values and the business needs that you want to go with. Now, what you want to do, and we'll talk about it uh uh, now is that you want to expose the right KPI in each and every phase to make sure that you're accelerating the value that you've defined while limit eliminating the waste. Now, uh, I'd like to introduce you to ALM Octane. I hope some of you are already familiar with it. And 
basically, you know, the digital transformation and the move to Agile and DevOps required us to think different about um, quality, speed, how to maintain value, and how to take smarter risk. So the set of problems has changed, and this is where Octane comes in. And we position Octane today as a comprehensive DevOps governance platform that supports enterprise application delivery with built-in quality, which has always been our heritage and will continue to be, continuous delivery and continuous visibility. It provides today a variety of capabilities from um, lean requirements, to Agile and Backlog Management, uh, DevOps Pipeline. But I think the big thing, and this is what I want to demonstrate today, is the cutting edge analytics dashboards that is rooted in the depth of the operation process and help organization to embrace sometimes the unknown, the unknown by controlling all of the aspects in the life cycle. What's uh, the, the beauty of Octane is that from day one, we've designed it to be open and integrate, integrated. So it's embraced the ecosystem, uh, the DevOps ecosystem that is out there. And while embracing it, it's maintained the traceability and visibility that you need. So it's kind of create a layer of governance uh, for governance, co- governors. And when I'm talking about governors, it's basically expanding uh, the role of the practitioner to look at things differently as well and get smarter decisions. So not only for managers, but for practitioners as well. Now, if I look at the values that Octane provides today, it varies from building quality and test management, uh, integrated into the DevOps ecosystem, you know, as I've said, uh, it provides full support today uh, for SAFE with portfolio planning and management. And it's enterprise ready because this is what we do. We provide software to enterprises. What I want to do uh, now is um, talk about the analytics part. Because uh, there is a nice quote that uh, Edward Demings said that without data, you're just another person with opinion. And I say that without insights, then you're just another person with data. And what's important here and what we're, uh, continue, we will continue to invest uh, uh, highly is provide a layer of uh, analytics and insights collecting the data and making something meaningful out of it so organizations can get smarter and actionable uh, um, data, data-driven decisions. So let's talk a little bit about insights um, and how Octane helps with that. So the first thing you want to do around insights is you don't want to get into the traps of too many metrics and then you become slave for those metrics or too little metrics and then you become, you know, you're, you're like flying blind. So you can't really tell if you're, you know, making progress and continuously improving or not. Um, what you don't want to do is also measure metrics that doesn't make sense or, you know, don't really create value. Um, and, and I think the biggest challenge is that you have islands of data that not, doesn't, don't really connect or trace to each other. So th- the dots are not connected. Now, in order to track the right KPIs, what you want to do is identify first the value that you're trying to achieve. Uh, Once you you identify the value, you want to expose the KPIs that will show you whether you're accelerating the delivery of the value in each one of the phases or not. And value can be um, frequency of releases, it can be quality, it can be level of service, it can be customer experience. I mean, it can be what the organization defines for itself. Um, And once you do that, you're able to, um, as I said, expose the KPI and identify the persona that care for this. Now, um, 
with Octane, I'd like to share with you uh, some highlights and screenshots that we have that you know can actually tell you some of the story. So here, you see you see the whole story in one screen. You're basically seeing the feature um, and a tag, whether you know for us it was a commitment to a customer or not. You see the prioritized list uh, of the features. You see the progress, and because Octane connects to um, SCCM, Git, and IDE, it can actually track and trace the progress of the development work. It track and trace the test coverage and also connects for the CI to see um, to capture the execution. Um, you can see the defects that are associated with this feature. Also, risky commits and risky commits are commits that have defects associated to them, critical defects. So this is where traceability comes into place, everything connected. And you can also see the vulnerabilities, uh, and we have integration with scanning uh, security tools, um, so you can actually see uh, um, the vulnerabilities as well. The other thing that you can see is you know, all kinds of dashboards. Uh, this particular one is around quality. It has a heat map uh, with a quality status per module, and this quality uh, status can be customized based on the criteria that each organization defines for itself. Uh, you can see risky commit per application module, uh, CI automation test per application module, manual uh, feature per application uh, uh, module, open defect. So once you correlate the data together, it can really tell you a story. And uh, I will elaborate on the DevOps journey session later on today. Another thing that we've included um, is around feature cycle time by phase, uh, by release, uh, by team, and also defect resolution time by phase. So it actually uh, tells you whether you're doing the things right and not just the right things. Um, we were looking at um, adding more and more KPIs. You know, in DevOps and Agile, it's a lot about automation. And what you want to be able to do is measure the effectiveness and efficiency of your automation. So we correlate uh, different parameters to provide you a holistic view of your automation assets. Now, the last view I want to share uh, in Octane is basically the DevOps pipeline view. And we all know that automation is a key. And in DevOps and Agile, a lot of the testing assets and all of the activities runs from the CI. And what you need to be doing is make sure your CI is stable at all time. But stable doesn't mean it fails. It means that you analyze quickly what's going on in your CI and you make sure to fix it. So what we have is we leverage AI in order to track a root cause analysis for the failures. So based on the history, the system know to classify the failures based on, you know, whether it was environment issue, testability issue or code issue. And if we're looking at tests, we all know the overhead of tests that are continuously failing or unstable or continuously skipped or regression that alerts us as well. So this is an important view that gives us the visibility that creates the ability to act and see whether things are in progress. And if we're talking about CI CD, let me talk about you know release control. So with DevOps, we're looking at multiple releases train, multiple environments, multiple dependencies, and of course the compliance and regulation that some organization needs to follow. You need, and it's obvious that you need to control what goes in and out of any environment. And our release control solution provide a unique process-centric release governance and orchestration capabilities across mainframe and distributed environment. And this is critical and important 
to any CD process that you're managing. Now, um, having said that, the reality is that there isn't, you know, one side of, of one size of methodology that fits all during any transformation. And there's no black and white, and there will probably be a lot of gray. And a lot of organization, you know, are currently and probably will be employing some kind of a hybrid of methodologies and disciplines. And this is where and why governance is really important to provide the layer of visibility into what's going on and to be able to make sure to optimize the different value stream equals the phases and to make sure value flows and we accelerate the value flow and creation and eliminating the waste. And this is exactly what we'll, we are doing and will be con continuing doing. Um, I would like to uh, thank you with that and um, we'll be happy to take any uh, questions. Thank you.